he's so worthy, he's so worthy. Come on, just keep praising him just for a moment. Amen. Yeah. 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 Father, we love you in this place today. We love you in this place today. Amen. Oh, so faithful. So faithful. So faithful. So faithful. So faithful. Yeah. Shut out of the bubble. So faithful. So faithful. Who is your neighbor? Say neighbor. The Lord is faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Now, here, I'm afraid. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. I'm afraid. That something's fixing to happen. I feel something stirring in the atmosphere. I, uh, uh, Brother Jack, I feel a revival spirit in the house tonight. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, friends, I need a revival in my life. I need a revival in my heart. I need a revival in my home. I tell you, what this country needs, they don't need a better president. They don't need a better government. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Taylor is faithful. I have heard about Brother Dan Hamilton. And now I have not just heard, I have experienced. Amen. How many love that man of God? His zeal and enthusiasm. Amen. The Lord is faithful. I'm going to try not to hold you too long. I've got five hours of content. <laughs> Tell you the Lord's good. It's dangerous when pastors get to preach out. Amen. But I just tell the Lord, I'm just so faithful to us. Amen. He's so good to us. I want to honor your pastors. Love Brother Jack, Sister Patty. Amen. In this work. And amen. Just had a, a few minutes after service this morning talking about the, the new facility that is coming. Amen. And it's closer than you think. Amen. It's closer than you think. Amen. The Lord is so faithful. Amen. Many, many ministries represented in this building tonight. And, and it's such an honor to be with you, but I do honor this house, honor your pastors. Amen. Sister Angie has worked so hard in that kitchen. I'm telling you, if you leave Norristown the same way that you came, you have missed God. <laughs> Amen. But maybe next year they'll put some wild varmints in that Brunswick stew. It was delicious, but a little possum would bring it on up a little bit. And ladies, I told them, I, I, I asked them, I said, do y'all have squirrel in this Brunswick stew? They said, no, dear God. Uh, I'd be surprised what it do to you. Uh, it was delicious. I, I just want to obey God for just a minute. Can I just, can I just talk to you? And, and, uh, I love the different uh, ministries that have been represented in the two services I've been here. And, and Brother Chumley preached a mighty word last night. And, and, and Brother Ray preached a mighty word. Uh, this morning, and I just, I, I love the different ways that ministers flow, and sometimes we emulate other ministers out of, you know, what we've been brought up with and around, and, and can I just share Jesus, my style, tonight, can, can I just, can I just share Jesus, my style, I can't do it like Brother Jack with his pimp stick, I can't do it like Brother Jack, <laughs> amen, Jesus. But can I just have a relationship with Jesus tonight? Amen. If you have read your Bibles, go with me to the book of Genesis. I want to preach something to you. You can probably preach. I'm telling you, uh, there's been some word preached in this place, and I, I, I'm just excited to see what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Will you stand with me? Uh, Genesis chapter number two, if you'll go there with me. I, I won't hold you too long. Uh, once again, I got five hours of content, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I have the longevity to, to pr produce that. So we'll see. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 16. Say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. I really want you to grab a hold of this tonight because I believe God's got a touch for somebody. Can you say amen? amen? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree, look at him say, of every tree, amen. of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Amen. Are you there? Every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But, look at him say, but. How many know that God put some conditions on some things? Amen. But of every, uh, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Now, would you ever say, surely die? Not surely die, but surely die. 18. And the Lord God 
said, It is not good that thou, uh, that the man should be alone, and I will make him a helpmate for him. Grab your neighbor's hand. Let's pray together. Father, we love you tonight. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the opportunity, God, to be in this house. God, I pray that the preacher shows up, not this preacher, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I already feel straight in this place. God, I pray for the authority of the Holy Ghost to rise up on the inside of this place tonight. God, if there's one fight, depression or oppression, God, that you break it up tonight. God, if there's addictions in the room, God, that they wouldn't go through a 12 step, God, but we try the one step. Amen. And find deliverance tonight. God, if there's one in the room that don't go you want, that you begin to deal, begin to draw, and begin to pull it tonight. God, because I'm not leaving the same way I came. I'm not leaving broke, busted, and disgusted. God, but I'm leaving this place knowing that I've been in the house of the Most High God. Open our hearts, God, and we can receive from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can receive. I love Jesus. My wife so longed to be here. Tonight she won't and she's watching live. Hey, hey baby. Brother, I'm not waking at you. <laughs> Love my wife and just the Lord has been so good to us. I want to, this this very familiar passage of scripture. The Lord's really been dealing with me on this, and I've never preached this before, so you guys will get with me after service and tell me some how can I improve in, in, in the points and, and some uh, uh, ways I can restructure the message that would be a more effective uh, way to, to communicate uh, with the audience or just write it down. It's up to you. Text it to Brother Joey Jacobs and he'll give it to you. <laughs> As I'm reading scripture, the Lord began to deal with me on verse number 17. It said, but every tree, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. From the day that thou shalt eat, as thou shalt surely die. You know, there's sometimes that we look at God, and a lot of people have a perception of God that He's way up there. And I preached the funeral uh, Friday of last week, brother, uh, brother Jack, and, and it was a man that, that I've known all my life. He was my uncle, but I never knew of him accepting Jesus as his personal Savior. So I went into that, no, and I'm not going to preach this man into heaven. I'm just going to preach the gospel to those that are still breathing. Can you say amen? And I did just that. I began to, to preach the gospel to them. Uh, but uh, when we've, we've got this idea, there's a perception of God, that God is way up there somewhere, an old gray-bearded man. But can I tell you today, God is closer now. Hallelujah. And God desires to do something right now. And then we've got to quit projecting a God that is way off under somewhere. But we need to live a life that people see a God on the inside of us. Amen. God wrote himself in flesh. Amen. And presented himself as a man like you and I. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. But the Lord was telling Adam in verse 17, don't eat of this tree. Can I tell you about my character? If there is a red button in the room and you tell me don't press that red button, anything and everything that I think about is centered around that red button. If you tell your child don't touch this or don't go there or don't do that, can I tell you what they think about? My God, I wonder what would it feel like? I wonder what it would taste like? What are they holding me back from? Amen. And Adam was told. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's some conditions that if you do it, thou shalt surely die. You know what's wonderful about the scripture is that God didn't tell me not to do it. It was Adam's responsibility. That's a revelation in itself. And I'll save that for another time, but I want to really get, you, get your mind pointed in this direction because we know that, that in chapter 3 around verse uh, number 6, and it says this, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes 
eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. I want you to just go with me just for a moment, and I want to I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a, a hypothetical question. I want to ask you a question about what would it look like if Adam and Eve would have never partaken of the tree. If I was to title the message tonight, it would be beyond the tree. What if where would mankind be if, if they would have never partaken of sin? Where would mankind be, Brother Jack? I have this feeling of this revelation that we probably wouldn't be here. Could you imagine in that moment that the anointing and the spirit and the presence of God that was untainted by sin and untainted by iniquity and untainted by perverse thoughts? Could you imagine how sweet the presence of the Lord was? There was no reason to have miracles because things that were un unlike God did not survive. Wow. There was no reason for healing because the body never aged. The body didn't grow numb. The body didn't wear out. Are you with me? What, what would happen beyond the tree? Wow. My God, could you imagine walking? Oh, yes. Can I just talk to you? As a redneck, you walk up to the favorite bass pond, no poles needed, just reach in there and move your finger. And here they come. come on. That's, just, that's the way my mind thinks about them. Beyond the tree, beyond the tree. My God, could you imagine a relationship with Jesus? And I can't speak for you, but I'm telling you, friends, I go through seasons in my life. Amen. That I've got to work through some stuff. Amen. In my life, I've got to work through. And it's not that I'm out there sitting and doing something crazy. It's just life. Amen. Everyone in this room. Amen. You're not immune to life. We got life. Life happens. It's unfair. Amen. We can't do nothing about it. Amen. We go through seasons in life where God seems a thousand miles away. But could you imagine every day, Brother Jack, walking in the cool of the day with the Lord? Holding your head. Could you imagine beyond the tree? Could you imagine that place of sin? I want you to think about that. In that place, that, that there was no hurt and no pain and no sorrow and no finances. Dear God, amen. Could you imagine that, that feeling of being so light and so easy before God? I, I, Brother Jack, I've had some moments in my relationship with God that I've seen God do some tremendous things, but I don't think I've ever experienced that place. Oh, me and my wife were in a discussion not too long ago because heaven has been, been a real topic in my house Amen. over the past little while. Amen. We were talking about heaven and talking about these things. And, and I said, I, I, we have been in some service and my God, we've seen the dead raised. We've seen cancer here. And we've seen God do some tremendous things. And I said, I tell you, I, I'm excited to see all that God has in store in glory for me. But can I tell you the one thing that makes me long for it the most is to be able to worship at the feet of the one who gave his life for me. To be, I, I, I can't wait to see the streets of gold. I can't wait to see the gates of pearl. There's something on the inside of me that is longing to lay before the Savior that gave his life for me. There's something on the inside of me. And then there's a nature on the inside of me, brother Jack, that longs for that place in God that's beyond the truth. There's something that wakes me up early in the morning that keeps me up late at night, hungry and thirsty for God. Something on the inside of me, Brother Jack, even though I, I've never experienced that, but something on the inside of me, that spirit man is longing to get to that place with God, that communion, that, 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 that place. We've met people from all walks of life. Can I tell you that everybody, my brother was talking about it, that, that young lady that he ran into at the gas station, there was something on the inside of her. Even though she was possessed, even though things were going on all around her, there was still a place on the inside of her. Though she may have been high, though she may have been under the influence of things in life, there was something on the inside of her that even though everything was around her falling apart, there was an inward man that was calling out to God. Can I tell you what Jesus done when he stepped out of the boat and this man that no church folk could contain? Even those that I'm telling you out, the trees cut themselves. But there was enough Jesus pulling on the inside of him. It didn't matter how many devils he had that he killed. Took a step to Jesus. Yeah. Come on, 
Because there is a place in humanity that longs for God. That longs for God. Look at your name and say, beyond the tree. God created you and I to long for Him. And, it, and when we look at the idea of longing for God, is it because I've been raised in church? Is it because my mama served God or my daddy served God? No, friend. Amen. God wants you to... You'd be surprised at the men and women of God that they weren't raised in church. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. They, they didn't cut their teeth on the church pews. But there was still something on the inside of him that no drink could feel, no high could feel, no attention could feel. There was still a place on the earth that was beyond the tree, that was beyond failure. Yeah. I would take a toll tonight, but I don't want to embarrass anybody, but can I ask you this tonight? Have you ever failed God? Have you ever made a mistake? Have you ever got to that place and you look at your life and say, God, I don't know where else to go from here. But then on the inside of you, you don't see how you're going to make it out. You, you, you don't see how uh, you can get out of this mess. But somehow God works it out. Amen. See, God was having a conversation with Adam and told Adam that thou shalt surely die. But that was the very thing that the adversary convinced Eve to eat this because thou shalt not sure die. But the Lord wasn't talking about a physical death. He was talking about a spiritual death. Because there's an enmity for God. That that carnality, that sin nature created an enmity or a distance. Beyond the tree. I, I couldn't imagine being in that place. Brother Sam is just walking. Thank you, God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Just walking with the Lord. Are y'all with me? Beyond the tree. Beyond the tree. I want to read you another passage of Scripture. I, 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 I'm not going to hold you too long. Do a little bouncing back and forth. In fact, go to John chapter 10 and verse number 10. I mean, you know the Scripture. John chapter 10, verse number 10, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal. Thank you. What did he, what did he come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Look at him say, he come to take. He come to take. He come to take. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But aren't you glad that that verse is not over? Or aren't you glad that it doesn't end there? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have, I have come that thou might have life. And that thou, uh, and that they might have it more abundantly. Because Jesus looked through the pages of time. And said, there, there is a place inside of humanity that was created to worship God. But through the failure and the sin that man had given created enmity, but Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Can I tell you tonight, the adversary has come to take, but can I tell you tonight that Jesus has come to give. And that Jesus has come to give. The adversary will take your family, take your life, take your mind, but can I tell you what the Lord will do? He'll give you your family back, he'll give 